I feel like I need to put a safety warning in. I know what you're all thinking, oh my goodness, really Jen? But actually I feel like I need to, so I'm just gonna do a quick safety warning and then we're gonna jump into the video. The Cricket have released the theme for week two of their Christmas Craft Along. Week two of our Christmas Craft Along and it's time to get your pets involved. We want to see handmade Christmas creations for your pets. Don't be sheepish, get creative. We can't wait to see some positively amazing makes. Tag your creations using hashtag Christmas Craft Along and we'll select our fave to be in for a chance of winning a roll of consumables next week. So of course, gifts for your pets could be anything. You could make treat bags, you could make treat boxes. There's things that you can make that you don't actually have to give to your pets. I am going to be making Bisley a toy today as one of my inspirations, which is why I want to do this safety warning. I know my Bisley. I know what he likes, what he doesn't like. I know how he plays with things. I know that when he plays with certain things, he gets really rough. I know with other things, he's really gentle. I know that he likes the smell of some things. I know that he loves certain fabrics. I know the fabrics that he's going to cuddle up to and I also know the fabrics that he is going to suck on. I know things that he's going to use with his claws and I know things that he's just going to pat with his paws. So I know him extremely well. So if I am making a toy to give to Bisley, it's made knowing how well I know him. Any toy that I have made, he does not play with on his own. I am always supervising him. If I am not around, the toy is not around just from a safety point of view. Anything that I am going to make him is going to be pet safe. So if I'm sewing, I need to make sure that I sew really well and that I actually make sure those stitches are really tight. If I'm going to glue something, then I need to make sure that the glue is not accessible to him. So I just want to put out there that if you are going to make a toy for your pet, you need to make sure that it's made with your pet in mind. You need to make sure that it is safe for them. And you also want to make sure that because it is homemade, that they are fully supervised when using it. <laughs> I'm in design space and you can see that I've already got one of my pieces ready to go so this is going to be a catnip mouse now I've made this design myself if anyone wants this please let me know in the comments below and I'll share it as a community project uh, but let me know because it's not going to be much on its own and I will only share the mouse side of it but I just made it using basic shapes, I'm using circles and squares. We're then going to go to images. And you can see I've already typed in feather. And I like this feather here. So I'm just going to click on this one and insert images. This is going to be our second toy, which is going to be a cat wand. So I just want to make that bigger first of all so I can see it. And then I'm just going to weld it all together so it just becomes one layer. I want to grab a circle. And I'm just going to bring my circle just up to here because I want to get rid of the stalk. And of course because it's all connected I can't contour it out. So I'm just going to highlight and slice. We can then get rid of the circle and our stalk. I'm then going to bring back a circle 
and I want to make it let's do 0 0.3 inches and we're just going to bring that over to the edge of our feather we're going to highlight and we're going to slice and this will just then be a circle that we can obviously put our elastic into I'm then going to duplicate the feather a few times and I'm just going to change the sizes on them so they're all different sizes but that's just a nice simple kind of toy to be able to make for well obviously it's a cat in this case so I can move my feathers out the way and then I'm going to come to shapes for my third item and I'm going to grab a square. I'm actually going to make a catnip taggy. So taggies are quite often used with babies. They're really simple and easy to make. As I said at the beginning of this video, please be aware of the things you're making for your pets. The same goes with baby and children. If you're going to be hand making toys, anything like that, please please make sure that you're really thinking about them if I hand make things and I give them as gifts I always say that they're more of a keepsake than a toy but taggies are really great they're basically just square materials and then there's ribbon all the way on the outside of them and they just make a great kind of textile for children to play with it really helps with their motor skills and it also helps with them with their color and their their um, touch development as well. So Bisley loves taggies, he loves them especially if they are soft, he loves them because I put catnip in them and he likes playing with the ribbons as well. So I'm just going to change my width to 10 inches so it becomes 10 inches square and then I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to change my duplicate to 9.5 and press enter I'm going to highlight both and I'm going to align and center and then with my smaller middle one I'm just going to change it from a cut to a right and I'm going to be using my Cricut fabric pen today let's just change it to green I'm then going to highlight and I'm going to attach these together so when our pen writes all the way around, we we'll then be able to follow that line so we can get a nice seam allowance on our taggy square. And I'm going to need two of those, so I'm just going to duplicate it. And then that's it. That's all I'm going to be doing for my inspiration today. I'm just going to do three pretty relatively easy toys. So we can then go to make it. I'm going to be using a variety of materials today. I'm going to be using fabrics, I'm going to be using Cricut felt, I may even use some Cricut leather as well. So I'm going to be using my rotary blade and my deep cut blade, probably my premium blade as well. So it all depends on what you're going to create. <laughs> we're going to work on is our catnip taggy so you can see I've got my fabric here and then I've got my fleece fabric the other side I just cut this on the fleece fabric setting and this was the cotton setting and I've placed them face down on top of each other you can also see my washable pen line as well so that will help me when it comes to sewing and then I've just got lots of different ribbons that I've put on the inside and I've just manually cut these so all I'm going to do is just fold them in half so then I'm just going to place them in between my two pieces so that the edges are facing outwards and then I can pin them in place and I'm doing four to a side. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to straight stitch all the 
the way round but I'm going to leave a gap on this corner here and then I'm going to go in with a zigzag stitch just to reinforce it but again I am going to leave a gap here so that I can sew this up afterwards. Now normally with a taggy I would put some wadding or some batting in there just to make it super soft and a bit squishy but because it's for Sir Bisley I'm not going to do that today I'm just having it as my cotton and my fleece. my gap here so I was able to turn it inside out. I'm just going to go over it with my easy press just to kind of even it out and make sure that my seams are all nice and crisp and that my uh, creases are all out. So I've got some loose catnip here so I'm just going to open up the tin and I'm going to add it into my taggy. So you can either hand stitch this or you can machine stitch it. If you're going to machine stitch it, I always go all the way around just because I think it looks slightly neater. So I'm just going to quickly machine stitch this and then it's ready for Sir Bisley. So we've got our mouse here, so we've got our ears and we've got our two sides and our bottom. Can anyone see a problem with this picture? Well, the problem with this picture is that somebody didn't engage brain and of course I've cut out two sides the same but I need them to go right side to right side and of course I can't do that so I need to go cut one side out again and I'm just going to turn my fabric around so that the right side is down on the mat so now it will sit right side to right side so the first thing you want to do is do your ears so you can see I've got my two pieces and I'm just going to place them into the slot and then I can just sew along this line here so it goes through the other side. We've now got our two sides with their ears on so we're going to place them on top of each other so that they are right side to right side and we're going to sew all the way around and we're going to leave the bottom clear. Now you do want to tuck the ears in at this point because you don't want to sew over the ears. Once it's sewn we can then add the bottom so you're just going to bring the bottom and then you're going to just get your pins and I always do a side at a time so I always pin one side first so we're just going to sew around and I always leave a gap at the back so that I can then stuff it and I can add my catnip as well now I'm not going to put any eyes on my mouth because I know Bisley and he has a terrible track record with small items uh, so much so that he had to have an operation so we avoid anything with beads or anything that he could possibly get hold of and eat I mean I am super paranoid about it uh, so I don't put any uh, kind of bits on his toys so I've got the back open here and I've got some fluffy stuffing and I've also got the catnip. Once it's stuffed you can then come in and either hand stitch it or machine stitch it. So you can see I've got my feathers here, I've cut them out of Cricut felt and I've cut them out of Cricut faux suede. And I've just got some elastic and I'm going to attach them to the elastic. I'm just going to tie them on and I'm going to tie them on in a really secure knot. So I've then got all my feathers onto my elastic. As I say, I would never let Bisley play with this unsupervised. I've also got some plastic tubing here so you can see there is a hole at the end so it's just a plastic tubing that I got from Bill's workshop and I've covered half of it in twine and I've got some slightly different coloured twine here so I've got my glue gun and I'm just going to glue a little bit of hot glue onto the edge here and then I'm just going to start tightly wrapping it when I get to the last inch or so, again, I'm just going to cover that in hot glue. 
where my tubing has got a hole I'm just going to feed in the top part of my elastic and I do want to leave some length on there I can then get my hot glue gun and I'm just going to put it into the tubing you then just want to leave that to dry and harden 